Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and back there is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. This is another video in our series on logical fallacies. And in this video, we will be looking at the fallacy fallacy. The fallacy fallacy is also known as the argument from fallacy and occurs when someone assumes that if an argument contains a logical fallacy, then its conclusion must be false. So let's look at an example of this fallacy. Now, most people will be familiar with this tweet from last year by the FDA about ivermectin. They tweeted, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Seriously, y'all, stop it. I'm not sure if I got that accent right, but anyway. And they link to a page which, which explains why you shouldn't use ivermectin to treat or prevent COVID. This is the start of the FDA page, and the page contains a number of legitimate reasons as to why you shouldn't use ivermectin to treat COVID. They also specifically look at ivermectin products that are made for animals and rightly point out that products made for animals could also contain ingredients that are not suitable for humans and therefore could be dangerous. So far, no logical fallacies. But some people have taken it further and said things such as ivermectin is a horse dewormer and not a COVID treatment, or pointed out that ivermectin is also used for sheep, which is rather amusing because a lot of ivermectin fans like to call people who don't agree with them sheep. Now, the second point really is quite funny. But neither of these things are logical reasons not to use ivermectin for COVID. Although ivermectin is used as an animal dewormer, it is also used in people, also as a dewormer. And of course, drugs are often repurposed. For instance, sodium valproate, also known as epilim, which was initially used in epilepsy, is now being used to treat bipolar disorder. So it is in fact a fallacy to say that because ivermectin is used as a horse dewormer, it is an ineffective treatment for COVID. And this brings us to the fallacy fallacy. A number of ivermectin fans point out that because ivermectin is also used in people, the claims are incorrect and ivermectin is in fact an effective treatment for COVID. However, just because people claiming that ivermectin is a horse dewormer and therefore not a treatment for COVID are using a fallacious argument doesn't mean that ivermectin is automatically an effective treatment for COVID. This is an example of the fallacy fallacy. To substantiate the claim that ivermectin is an effective treatment for COVID, you need evidence. And at the time I am recording this video, this evidence does not exist. Now, if you want more details about why there is no evidence that ivermectin is an effective treatment for COVID, I have made a number of videos covering this subject, and I'll provide links to them in the video's description. However, I will briefly cover the most important point here. The only way to determine if a treatment is effective or not is to do what is known as a randomised controlled trial. What happens in a randomised controlled trial is people are randomly assigned to one of two groups. And this randomisation step is critical because without it, you don't know whether your two groups have differences that will affect their outcome. One group is given the treatment and the other group is given a tablet that looks identical to the treatment but doesn't actually contain any medication, otherwise known as a placebo. You then compare the results of the two groups and see if there is any difference. A number of these trials have been done for ivermectin and none of them showed a benefit. The most Thorough review of ivermectin randomised clinical trials has been done by the Cochrane Library to produce what is known as a systematic review. And Cochrane is the gold standard for doing these types of reviews. The systematic literature search for the report is up to date to the 
16th of December 2021. And additionally, they included trials with more than a thousand participants up until April 2022. The complete report is 176 pages long. And if you have the time and the interest, it is well worth a read because they explain in detail the shortcomings of a lot of the current trials that have been completed for ivermectin. But for now, we'll just have a look at the author's conclusions and I'll read them out for you. For outpatients, there is currently low to high certainty evidence that ivermectin has no beneficial effect for people with COVID-19. Based on the very low certainty evidence for inpatients, we are still uncertain whether ivermectin prevents death or clinical worsening or increases serious adverse events, while there is low certainty evidence that it has no beneficial effect regarding clinical improvement viral clearance and adverse events. No evidence is available on ivermectin to prevent SARS-CoV-2 infection. In this update, certainty of evidence increased through higher quality trials, including more participants. According to this review's living approach, we will continually update our search. So in other words, at this stage, no evidence that ivermectin provides any benefit and mounting evidence that it doesn't. So just because someone's argument is fallacious, it doesn't mean the conclusion is incorrect. If you see people succumbing to the fallacy fallacy in comments on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or anywhere else, please share this video with them. And thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that YouTube will share it with more people. I'll be making more videos in the future looking at logical fallacies. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.